Hey everybody, I'm Ozzy, and uh, today I thought we'd talk about something a little more positive um, in the wake of everything that's been going on, uh, sadly, in our country. Uh, I figured today's topic might be helpful to be a little more positive on the newsfeed. So today, for some mental health education, I thought I'd share with, uh, with you guys, whoever's watching, um, in hopes that this is helpful. I thought I'd share a concept that comes up a lot in therapy uh, when I'm talking to clients about something positive. And um, this topic that I'm going to give to you guys in this video, hopefully much shorter than the other one, is going to be about um, this topic that came up, I want to say it was back in the late 90s. Back in the late 90s, we had a new guy for president of the APA, which is like the American Psychological Association, and he wanted to push the theme of positive psychology. So back in the late 90s, we had a big old push of positive psych that kind of entered the mainstream and all that jazz. And so uh, I remember back in my grad school, we did a little bit of a, a class in positive psych, and it was really cool. And I learned about this concept that I remember experiencing, which is why it really cemented to my, my, uh, my understanding. And the topic itself, how do I put it? So the guy who came up with it was, I think it was Hungarian-American, something like that. But his name was um, Mahali Csikszentmihalyi. And um, his last name is like 16 letters long. So I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I think it's Csikszentmihalyi. He basically came up with this concept called flow or the optimal experience. And flow is this state of mind that one gets into in this situation that they're in along with their actions and so forth. And you know, one, one way to put it is the, the concept that comes up all the time in, th in therapy. It's like being in the zone. In fact, being in the zone is, is sometimes described that, that, that that's flow, right? So there's qualities to flow. And Mahali came up with this idea because he recognized how important it is to have an experience where you can really be in the moment and how that can apply to one, well, the experience itself but then more importantly, how can you apply that to one's life? So we always talk about this because a lot of times with, with clients and therapy and mental health and all that jazz, um, stress can rob us of positivity and dealing with life and just trying to do things in the world can sometimes be um, stressful, tumultuous, painful, suffering. So we always at some point, or at least I make it a point to talk to my clients about what do they got going on that's helping them maintain you know, what do we do for self-care? What do we do for positivity in our life? What do we do to kind of flex the other side? You know, where one side's all the BS, all the pain, all the hurt, all the stress, all the work. You know, we gotta do that, we gotta deal with that, we gotta experience that. But what about, how do we charge? How do we, we, how do we recharge? How do you uh, put more gas in the tank, right? How do you fulfill some kind of uh, uh, recovery process? right? Because we're not perfect. And one of the big things I understood from mental health and education is you have to take care of yourself. One has to really take care of themselves in multiple levels. So one level we talk about is doing good things in our life, doing fun things. So I want to talk about that. And one way to achieve that is to kind of remember what being in the zone is like. And talking about that with clients is really helpful because when they leave, it feels, and from what they've told me before, it seems as though there's a better feeling of now I know what to look for when I'm doing something for myself or now I know kind of how to look back and pick up on whether or not I've been doing it right or helping me in my own way. So I want to talk about flow with you guys and kind of just educate you on some of the main points. My hope is that you take this in, it makes sense, and then you're able to maybe try it out, you know, give yourself a chance to maybe put yourself consciously in it or work towards it with maybe greater intention or go back to what you know you normally do because you get in it and it's not a problem. But just enjoy it now with a little more awareness. Or if you've already been doing it with awareness, then just keep passing it on, right? So I wanna talk about these points. There's eight points mainly that Mahali discussed and I'm gonna go over all of them, not too much in detail. Again, this isn't supposed to be a replacement for therapy. I just wanna make some helpful videos to express uh, uh, thoughts and explain things that are brought up in my therapy with clients, things that I help educate my clients on that I help deal with their stressors and problems. 
but um, it's helpful to talk about the concepts and the topics perhaps and share those and how I bring those and discuss those with people. So I'm going to talk about these points and some of them will seem very familiar. Some of them I'm just going to kind of glance over. They're pretty self-explanatory, but others I want to focus on a little bit more. So <clears throat> one big point when you're in the zone or you're having the optimal experience is it feels like you're in control. But you can find flow in many things. The big thing with being in the zone, we kind of think about maybe with sports or arts, creativity, like people that are in the zone, right? If you're playing a game and you're in the zone, uh, you may feel very much a sense of control, right? Like I know exactly what I'm going to do next. Or an artist is like, I know exactly how I want to manipulate the medium that I'm working with. So there's a strong sense and feeling of control that one has to what's going on in a conversation. You can even, sorry for the excess noise, you can even have flow in conversations where it feels like, you know, you're in the zone in a talk with somebody. Plenty of times it happens in my session where I feel a sense of flow and sometimes there's a very good sense of control. Like I, I don't know what this person's gonna say, but if they say this next, which I'm pretty sure they're gonna say, I may benefit by bringing this up or this up, but let's see where they go with this. You know, let's see what they're, what they're bringing up. There's a feeling of control with what is about to be said or what you wanna share, or what you're listening to. Or in a game, right, a feeling of control, like I say, with the, the, with the mechanisms, the instrument, the tools you're using or whatever. But there's a strong feeling of control in the activity or the situation that you're in. There's also a sense of, um, how do I put it? Super, super intense focus, high level of concentration, right? They often talk about not really being distracted when you're in the zone. And that makes sense. You're, you're super focused. You maybe, if you're hanging out with friends, you maybe don't hear your phone buzzing or you don't uh, hear, um, you know, if you're more uh, on the younger side and watching this, it's like you don't hear your parents calling for you, right, from outside or something like that. Um, maybe you're focused on something at home. You don't hear your spouse calling to you from the other room or a family member hollering your name just from outside the door, right? Maybe you're so focused in the game you're playing, you don't notice the crowd that's watching you, the audience. They're not even there, right? But you're so focused on the concentration or the, you're so concentrated on what's going on in front of you that you're not distracted. So there's a really good sense of high level of concentration that we can connect with when we're in the zone. And I like that. Then there's a sense of clarity and goals, right? A sense of feedback that one gets. With clients, we talk about various things that they find themselves in when they're in the zone. And one cool thing is they recognize this quality. It's like they're getting some kind of instant feedback loop about what's happening, assessing problems and figuring things out as they go. I used to have one client that worked a lot in like disaster stuff, disaster type relief. And uh, we were able to connect and share stories. And one of the cool things was I remember sharing where I had gone to help uh, after Hurricane Katrina hit and college, they had us have an opportunity where we could go and help rebuild, clean up communities that were uh, destroyed by the hurricane. And shout out to Pecan Island, Louisiana. And there was cool moments where we were in the zone. We worked in pods, little groups of teams. And I remember we had our assignment, we would go out and we'd focus on our goal for that, that day. And as problems came up, little things, little issues, it was cool to see all of us working together. I could kind of see this point, this quality of feedback and, and goals and adjustments and constant problem solving going on among the team, among ourselves, in the situations we were doing or all together. It was really cool, right? And clients have plenty of times told me that sense of say, like in a sport, Totally, like based on what the offense is doing, I kind of know what kind of defense we have to set up now, actively changing plans because things are changing on the field, right? Or for an artist that maybe is working in photography and maybe their subject changes or the environment changes around them and so they're kind of changing what they're going to do, how they're going to approach it, what they're going to work with. Again, this feedback loop, right? Or in a conversation. <sighs> you may have the unfortunate... Um, move of assuming that you think the conversation is going to go a certain way and you're all prepared, ready for it to go like this. And you're like, oh, I'm going to say this and I'm going to say this and blah, blah, blah. And then they throw you a curveball and all of a sudden it's not exactly what you thought. But in that moment, you're so in the zone 
that you're just like picking up and changing. All right, that's cool. It's all right. I'll I'll say this instead. And, and you know, that's why I have this ready to go. And, you know, you're sitting there actively working. And before you know it, you still maintain some feeling of control of yourself in the conversation. I really like this quality of flow. Another one is uh, happiness. Mahali pointed out in his books how, you know, one big thing people talk about this quality is they're happy when they have a flow activity. That whole point about being concentrated and focused sometimes takes away from that feeling of happiness because you're too focused and in concentration that you're not just happy. So some clients have told me before where it's like, I was able to really feel that sense of happiness, that sense of reward. I do this for the sake of doing it after the activity was over or as things were wrapping up. Because it's like at the end, you're kind of coming down from that concentration and intensity of being in the zone that now you kind of get to appreciate that happiness and like, oh, that was awesome kind of sense, that feel good that comes after the activity or the conversation or the experience or whatever. Um, I don't know if I said this already because, you know, it's it's been a crazy week and then all, but maybe, maybe I've said this, maybe not. But there is a sense of effortlessness. I think that kind of relates to the control feeling. Maybe that's why I'm mixing it up. But there's a point of effortlessness, effortlessness that one experiences in flow. And for us, when we're in the zone, we can really connect with that feeling. Like That's why I say it relates to the control. You have a feeling of effortlessness to what's happening. Sometimes not. it's separate from control in that sometimes you just know that there's a, a, a an experience you're a part of. You're in control of yourself. But this thing that's happening, there's a sense of like all the moving parts are, are moving exactly as designed, exactly as intended, and I'm witnessing it happen. All right? I think that's kind of more of what they're saying when we talk about this effortlessness along with what you bring to the, the situation as well. I'm saving the last two because I really love these other things. I'm trying to think of which one to talk about first, All right? because these are my two favorite points that I talk about with clients. I'll talk about the first one, time distortion. Mahali really talks about this point and I think it's important because I think it's one of the big things when I talk about with clients that captures that or their attention and they can really relate to is time. When you're in flow, there's a quality of time distortion that one experiences. It's kind of like uh, that old saying, time flies when you're having fun. There's a reason they say that. And I think this is part of it. I imagine all these times when we're young and we're having fun and it's like, you know, I got to go or my mom's calling or like, oh, the street lights are on. I have to go home. And before you knew it, like that, that, that moment hit and it didn't feel like it was long enough. Maybe even now as an adult, you know, we'll sit there and be joking with my friends and laughing in a conversation. And then before I know it, it's like, hey, I got to wrap up. I got to get going. Got I got an early start tomorrow. Right. Or hanging with the family. We're having family game night. Kids are being silly. I'm being silly. You know, me and my wife are talking, enjoying the moment. And before I know it, the timer's going off and it's bedtime. It's funny, there is a sense of time distortion. Sometimes it can be obviously that sense of time flies, so it speeds up. Sometimes it's like time slows down. Um, some people can express to me how it feels like things went in slow-mo. And that's cool too. I appreciate those moments as well when we experience flow. Um, I think that's another just example of how there is this thing that I'm, this consciousness that I'm kind of under, this moment, this experience, this harmony that I'm hitting, I'm in the zone. One of the cool things I like to share with clients is and one of my favorite experiences was when I went, I think it was in college, I went to the city to visit a friend and his brother and they invited me to a concert that was playing in, in Chicago. It was a Coheed and Cambria concert and it was really, really good, really heavy metal, rock kind of music and man, it was awesome and I apologize if that's totally not how Coheed and Cambria uh, categorize themselves, my bad guys, but um. It was a really great concert. I don't remember where it was playing, but I remember when I got there, I got there separately. At one point of the night, we went into a mosh pit. And if for any of you who are watching and don't know what a mosh pit is, at a concert, a mosh pit is where people basically get together in a pit and just mosh around with each other, basically punching, kicking. No, not kicking, I hope not, but from what I remember, uh, what's it called? Elbowing, punching, you know, arms out, just running around in circles, pushing each other. I, I'm not even gonna try to express why, other than it's fun. So I, of course, go, to, go down into the mosh pit with my friend. I remember at one point, there was one song play, and I believe it was Three Evils by them. And at one point, 
you could feel the, the, you know, the wave of people that you were there in the front and, and you could see just this ocean of individuals and you could see the wave kind of crashing just randomly. And at, at one point I remember feeling the pressure and getting clocked in the face and pushing back and this and that. But then I remember like the sense of like quietness as the beat was coming up and both sides of the crowd were pushing towards me in the middle. And at one point this happened. I was so cramped up, my arm pushed up knocking my glasses off from my face and up into the air, about like five inches, four inches. All of it within about half a second. But with this moment, this experience, being in the zone, all of us are just trying to maintain a sense of control, not getting trampled, not falling, while also not being consciously violent to the point of like wanting to punch someone in the face. It's more just kind of like, I'm at least just keeping my arms up and random, not trying to intentionally hit people. But you're sitting there not trying to get clocked and stay conscious and stay in control, and now these glasses go flying. And before I know it, there's this moment of like a slowdown. The clock goes to right all that all that you know record scratch all that stuff and i could see these glasses fly up and all i'm thinking if i don't catch these that's it I'm, I'm, I'm walking home i can't see i'm screwed i'm out 200 bucks or whatever uh, i'm not trying to reach down and, and grab it i'll trample so i'm sitting there and i notice these glasses come down and i just open my palms up and thank goodness i was able to just clasp them into my arms my hands and I just held them. I think I might have cracked one of the, the angels holding them so tight. I didn't care. My point is again that moment of slowing down. The whole night was fun, but that was a big point that stuck out. I almost lost my glasses. Time slowed down. It was all fun. So look for time distortion. It's a nice quality to recognize. My favorite quality though is this one quality, the main quality in my opinion that that Mahali talks about, which is there's a balance between your skills and the task that you're involved in, right? There's a, there's a sense of balance that you're trying to play out. And, and there's a visual to it that I'm gonna share. I get to bust out my trusty whiteboard and my awesome little pointer. So you guys get to be a part of this. Now, I, I may have switched this up a little bit. So this whole harmony or balance of skills and challenge of the task looks like this. You find flow in the middle and you have your skill level and your level of challenge. If your level of challenge is too low, and your skill level's too high, you enter some area here of emotion and experience. And this area, point A, is something more akin to like feeling bored, feeling apathetic. It's too easy, whatever. I mean, think about it, right? If your skills are too high, you're too good, you're too, too competent for whatever the task is, it's gonna come off pretty simple. It's not really challenging. It's not really, you know, maybe fun, perhaps. I'm not saying that easy things aren't fun sometimes. I'm sure we can all enjoy fun, easy things. But when we're really talking about this flow experience and something where you can really get in the zone with, a lot of times people can relate to the fact that, yeah, man, when something's too easy, it may be fun, it may be a good time, but it isn't essentially a flow. The other point or the other end would be if your skill level is too low and the level of challenge is too high. That's a whole other ballgame. That's the opposite end where you may experience something more of like stress, fear, anxiety, um, anger, frustration. Right? You ever been doing something that was too challenging for you, way over your head? Sometimes, and in all those examples I've given earlier, you can you can see how this could be the case for all of it. Um, being in a sport where you're playing the top team in the league, and your team knows it. You know, you're sitting there knowing that your skills are low, and that challenge is way too high. Y'all may try your best, but you kind of know you're going to get your butts whipped. That's all right. It's time to rebuild, a chance to try to improve. But you may experience some of those feelings of nervousness, anxiety, a little bit of stress or whatnot. You could be in a conversation and sometimes you know you're talking way over your head. I've talked to clients sometimes that I know are way, way smarter than me. And I and I know it's not like, you know, you, you can't talk to a client that's smarter than you, but like it's hard not to listen to that little voice in your head that's like, are you gonna go to keep up? Can you keep up with them? So there's sometimes a feeling of skill that you may have say in a conversation and maybe you don't feel like it's uh, it's high enough for the challenge but you can find that in an activity in a conversation in a situation with people hanging out with friends a lot of times with social anxiety there's a component to this they feel like their skills and social interaction are low and the challenges that they're in the situations they're in are too challenging so they're stressed they're anxious they're not finding themselves flow really cool thing in therapy is when you get a client to work themselves socially and they build that self-esteem, their communication skills. And I can see this actually change. Their skills go up and they kind of get closer to being somewhere in flow where they're just like, yeah, it was just fun. I was able to hang out with my friends or I was able to go at lunch with my, uh, with my, with my friend and so-and-so. And I didn't feel so worried. I didn't feel so 
caught up with those thoughts or doubt, et cetera, et cetera. So this is one area. The area we want is right here in this sweet little orange spot. We want flow. We want it where Mahali talks about your skills and your challenge being somewhere in balance. All right, you can be a beginner, a level one anything. And if that challenge is still level one, two, you're going to be able to experience flow to some degree. You can try to get in there. So you can sit there and start as a newbie here, a greenhorn, whatever, a, a beginner. But as long as you're practicing and building, you can kind of build up and experience flow. You can, someone who starts off playing soccer when they're a toddler can experience flow and still experience flow when they're in their early 20s playing on leagues, you know, on a team. It's very possible. A kid sitting there being little and playing, or I mean drawing doodle figures, showing his mom and dad can be in flow, you know, coloring for an hour or so, and then later in their 30s, showing their exhibits or working on pieces for their exhibit next week at a big art museum or whatever, can still find themselves in flow. We travel, put this, I put this down too early, we travel along this process, we can grow. With this point of challenge and skill, you kind of want the challenge to be a little bit more than your skill. And I like that. I like that. I think that's accurate because if the challenge is a little bit more than what you're, you're capable of, not too much more, right? Not too much. It's just, just a little bit. It's just the right amount, right? Whatever that is. If it's just enough, you may have that potential to have that inner strength pulled out of you. You know, that, that potential that we all have. I talk to all my clients about the potential that's in each and every one of them. And sometimes we get stuck in life, sidetracked, and, and that potential gets covered up. So Mahali talks about pulling people's potential out. This process is an important piece to helping an individual become self-actualized, to helping reach that sense of fulfillment in us. This is a part of that process, it helps. And so when you can balance these things, you can find this harmony that even if to some degree makes you grow, I sometimes talk to some of my clients who game. I like to play games, video games and stuff like that when I have free time. And sometimes we talk about some of the game themes and there's sometimes this theme that I recognize in video games or sometimes stories too with uh, uh, games and whatnot or, or comics and fantasy. Sometimes the, the protagonist has a quality of like a superhuman quality or like a magical quality of like um, evolution or re rebirth. Um, they get, they get, uh, uh, what's it called? Beat up so bad, but they don't, you know, not to the point of death, but at the point where they can become stronger from it, right? Or they lost an experience, but gained some kind of knowledge and now they're more prepared, right? They've grown, right? I think that's what, what Mahali is talking about is when the challenge is a little bit more than your skill level, there can be some of that, uh, uh, feedback loop going on, that clarity of goals, et cetera, trying to work problems out that helps you grow. Right, like little miniature growth going on. It's kind of like what we're seeing, but with this personality, with this quality, with this behavior, with the strength of this individual. So I, I love the whole skill and challenge quality component of flow. And we talk about this a lot with clients, and then I start to apply at this point, how can we find that in activities going on with them, right? So here's where I'll leave it off with you guys. Think about this. Look this stuff up yourself. You can totally throw up uh, Flow or Mahali. And, um, and yeah, like I said, good luck. I'm not going to spell his last name, but it's Mahali Csikszentmihalyi. And uh, Google him. You take a look at this. Look at this up. Look this up yourself. Read his books. Take a look into it. One of the nice things what Mahali was trying to say is if, if you relate to what I've said and you can think about an activity that you're like, yeah, man, I've played games and I've experienced flow or I've been outside. I've done sports. I've done stuff. I've been at work and experienced flow. That's a big one, too. And you recognize this. Imagine if you could apply or get into that kind of zone when it comes to life, right? When it comes to the responsibilities, like, you know, all the adulting stuff, right? The stress of life, all those problems. Imagine if we could try to apply that to life on a bigger scale. Not just this one activity, right? Trying to find ways to get in the zone and figure out this thing when it's gaming, but it's like maybe with like with like my finances, with my family relationships, maybe with like my uh, behaviors of indulgence, maybe with my bad behaviors in general, maybe with my education, 
maybe my discipline. Like there's so many components you could try to maybe apply this to. And I think that was the bigger message that Mahali was, was talking about. So I encourage you guys watching to take a look at this stuff and maybe think about yourselves. You know, in these times, um, as crazy as they may seem right now, it's still very important to take care of oneself and make sure you're not letting yourself slip further and further into your own darkness or out of, around, that, of the darkness around us. So keep fighting. And one way to fight is to take care of yourself. And one way to take care of yourself is to get in the zone with something. Get, get, get in the flow. Find something positive. Find something good, whether it's with yourself, with people, an activity, a sport, a game, a team, something. Get in the zone. You know, look at trying to get into that mindset. And it's a very helpful thing. And we could use it every now and then. We could probably use it a little more during these times. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was educational. I hope it was somewhat useful. Um, any questions or whatnot, drop me a line, all that good stuff. You guys take care of yourselves and have a good rest of the week.